I'm sure by now the vast majority of the people in my audience have seen this absolutely incredible, nearly unbelievable picture of what is alleged to be one of the rounds fired at Donald Trump passing just over and behind his shoulder. It's something that not a lot of people who are unschooled in the use of weapons would really understand why the image looks like it does. Most have no concept of how fast those rounds are traveling when they leave the muzzle of a weapon. And I've done the calculations on this, and the numbers that come up are startling. They truly are. And once again, pardon the noise in the background. We're having a bit of a thunder boomer here in Florida. Nothing to write home about. The distance from the shooter's location to where Trump was was only about 400 feet. Now, I've heard a lot of talk about where did this guy get sniper training? Where did this guy get sniper training? That's not a sniper shot, folks. There are young men who failed basic rifle marksmanship in the United States Army, who failed it, who weren't allowed to graduate at basic training, who hit all of the 100-meter targets on the qualification range. They weren't allowed to pass. You have to be able to hit much farther out just to be able to graduate Army basic training and hit them on a regular basis, much smaller targets. This was not a difficult shot. This was not a shot that you would need sniper training to hit. And once again, it has a great deal to do, pardon me, with the speed of that round coming out of the muzzle of the weapon. I haven't heard anybody talk about it. We're going to talk about it today. Real quick, I know a lot of you have been incredibly patient, um, some maybe a little bit less patient, about the videos over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. With all of the events going on now, I've had to kind of refocus a little bit on what the proper tack will be going forward. I know I had said a few days ago we were going to have one up the next 48 hours. Of course, events changing so fast. I'm trying to shift gears, and I am working on one for sure, so God bless all of you who are hanging in with me over there. Thank you so much. I very much appreciate it. I know it was like June 27th last time we got a video up. We are going to get another one up. Mark my words. Um, just bear with me. Now, real quick, AR-15 style weapons are generally speaking, as far as their capacity and range, all about the same thing. This is just a stock image. The, the speed of the round coming out of the muzzle is what usually escapes a lot of people. I've also heard uh, that Trump escaped because, you know, he turned his head and, you know, there might have been a slight wind. Wind would have had nothing to do with it at 400 feet. Wait, what are you saying? It has to do with just the, the, the inertia and the, the momentum of the round. The muzzle velocity of a standard AR-15 style like weapon is 3,300 feet per second. Donald Trump was only 400 feet from the muzzle of that weapon. That's less than an eighth of a second. For those of you that want to look at it on a stopwatch, it's 0.13 seconds. That means from the time that kid pulled the trigger to the time that round was here from that building was 0.13 seconds. That's what makes such a tiny little piece of metal so incredibly destructive. It just has to do with the speed it's traveling. What A lot of what you're seeing here, you see this part way over here to the right that's just a little bit darker? That's the round. What you're seeing here behind it, that is the vapor trail. That is the superheated air that is being created by the incredible velocity of that tiny, tiny little piece. Now, to put in perspective, 0.13 seconds, and don't ask me how long it took me to get this to stop at exactly 0.13 seconds. It is about the speed of a standard double click. You can do it a little faster if you want to. I've, I double-clicked it at 09 a couple of times. I'm sure if you really sat there and tried, you could get it much faster. But a standard everyday double-click, the space between click one and click two 
when you double click is the amount of time it took for that round from the time the trigger was pulled to reach that picture. So there's absolutely, uh, once again, um, not any chance for there to be some issue with wind. I mean, you would have to be shooting in a hurricane for, for that, for at that range. And let me say this again, clearly, just so everybody understands. You can go out on the range, and this is just U.S. Army standard, not the Marines, and definitely not Special Forces. Just to qualify Army basic training, the, you have 20 pop-ups to hit from the prone position, 20 pop-ups to hit from standing inside a cement foxhole, and the vast majority of the rounds that you have to fire are at targets that are popping up beyond 100 yards. Most everybody, most everybody can hit the 50, which pops up right in front of you very quickly. You have to get the round off um, almost immediately before the, the pop-up flaps back down and you've missed. The 100 is gravy. The 100 is the absolute gravy round. It's like hitting a six-foot putt. It's, it's literally, and that's not overstating the case, with that weapon. And that's using iron sights, not, not a... Uh, not a red dot. And that was with the old M16A1, which had issues um, with being a little bit jinky. And even I remember some of the uh, drill sergeants with the weapons that were being issued to us in basic training, having to work on a few of them to get them zeroed in. So, you know, it's one of those kind of learning curve things. Once again, 3,300 feet per second, 400 feet away, less than an eighth of a second, 0.13 seconds. Now, strangely enough, strangely enough, that is the exact same amount of time that it takes light to circle the earth one time. I thought that was very strange. 0.13 seconds being the amount of time that round left the weapon to where it was in the picture, being the amount of time it takes light to go around the globe. Now, how many of you knew that this was the anniversary yesterday when this happened? It was the exact day that JFK secured the Democratic presidential nomination. Quote, how a young man without an impressive, impressive political record, without a program, without broad rank and file support, won the presidency. Now, he didn't, to be very clear, he didn't win the presidency on July 13, 1960. That was the day he secured the nomination, and we know what happened to JFK. It gets even farther. Now, this is something you're not going to hear in any other channel. July 13, 1934. This is, let's see, 66 and 24. This would be 90 years ago. 90 years ago, Adolf Hitler gave a nationally broadcast 90-minute speech to the Reichstag justifying the Night of the Long Knives accusing purged individuals of treason and plotting revolt. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that Donald Trump is Hitler. I'm not saying Donald Trump is Hitler. What I'm saying is that how many people have heard, have heard in the prior weeks, in the prior weeks, this issue with Biden, with the Democrats, trying to replace him, the internal revolt they were having. I heard it multiple times on the news being referred to as, quote-unquote, the Night of the Long Knives. That there were people coming out and getting rid of you know, Biden loyalists. I mean, not in the sense of depriving them of their life or anything, like happened back then. But it was referred to as the Night of the Long Knives. July 13, 1934. Also, the New York City draft riots, July 13, 1863. This was a um, draft week. Violent disturbances in lower Manhattan, widely regarded as the culmination of working class discontent with new laws passed by Congress that year to draft men to fight in the ongoing American Civil War. How many people have heard this? Go look at Twitter or X or whatever the heck it is now about uh, how many posts about civil war in America, or how many people have heard 
about these rumors of reinstating the draft because of running out of people. The military can't draft the people. It's just very, very strange. Very, very, very odd that July 13, this year, 1863, let's see, would that be 137 and 161 years ago? That the draft, that that was going on then, and we hear about this exact same thing now, the Night of the Long Knives, Adolf Hitler's speech, um, basically Night of the Long Knives, a whole bunch of people from the uh, Nazi party went out and got rid of anyone who had spoke anything ill of Adolf Hitler at all. Um, just very strange coincidence. Kennedy, July 13, 1960. The amount of time, I mean, this, this numerology is just very, very odd. Very, very odd. And, you know, I'm not saying that um, everyone should know all of the specific details, nuts and bolts of how AR-15s work and, you know, their muzzle velocity and all this. But one of the arguments that was being made and that even I had made um, about weapons like this, it's something that I had done in a completely different take on, but it was basically the same idea that right now in Great Britain, right now in Great Britain, there's, a, there's an article I was going to do video on talking about how many their prison system, much like ours, is wildly overcrowded and they are just going to be mass releasing people in Great Britain. It's something that I had done extensive series of videos on and my allegation was there are a lot of people out there right now who have a very lax attitude to the security of their weapons. They think they think their weapons are secure just because they have a gun safe, just because um, you know they lock their doors at night. And, you know, they carry the, the key to their gun safe around on their, their key ring, you know, not realizing that, you know, any one person, I think if this, I think if this event proves anything, any one person is vulnerable. And if you were to, if you're walking around and, and you've got a key to an armory, a key to an armory and thousands of rounds of ammunition on you, and you somehow can be compromised, whether it's when you're sleeping, when you're bathing, when you're using the facilities, when you're just not paying attention. And even a small group of people would be able to compromise you and get a hold of that key. You've just taken that small group of people and turned them into a military force because now they have access to all of your weapons, all of your ammo. And the idea that this kid got this weapon from his dad when he clearly should not have had access to any weapons is kind of the reinforcement of the point is that as, as good as you are with weapons, as good of a security plan as you have, I mean, unless, you know, you have multiple undefeatable um, security emplacements between you and your weapons, when you have an armory like this, this is going to happen more and more and more and more and more. Because once again, it was a random 20-year-old kid with no criminal record who got the weapon from his dad. And as you can see, it only took one, one mess up. It only took one mess up in security and one hesitation from somebody who had Overwatch. And look what almost happened. I mean, imagine if it had been, imagine if it had been people talking about all the people coming across the border. Imagine if it had been two or three guys with actual training that had set up at multiple positions and, and knew how to, you know, mitigate any, any attempt to stop them with actual training. Look how close this was with some kid with no training. If there had been multiple, this would have been over. This, this whole thing would have been over, and you probably wouldn't have got them. If they had any level of organization, any level of training, any level of ability to, you know, have discipline when, when firing a weapon, I still, like I said, and I'll reiterate it, I know it's for the third time, there are guys 
I knew, who rocked out of Army basic training, who got sent home or recycled because they couldn't hit more than the 100-meter targets. They hit all the 100-meter targets. On the, but they missed the 250s. They missed the 300s. And they didn't, they didn't qualify. So you don't have to be a sniper. You, you don't even have to be good enough to graduate basic training to make this shot. You don't even have to be good enough to graduate basic training to make this shot. You could have failed basic training and made this shot. In the basic rifle marksmanship and basic training, I should be accurate there. So, once again, way over here, this is the actual round. This is the vapor trail of what you're seeing. This isn't some something out of the Matrix, some Neo thing. It was. It's just the vapor trail. So, anyway, you can you can check my my information. It's uh, it's pretty much dead dead on. Point one three seconds. Point one three seconds. Point one three seconds on July thirteenth. Point one three seconds on July thirteenth. Same amount of time it takes light to go around the world once. Kennedy assassinated president. July 13, 1960. July 13, 1934. Adolf Hitler, that everybody has compared Trump to. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing it here. Don't give me the crap down in the comments. 90 minute speech. 90 minute speech. 90 years ago. To the Reichstag. Night of the Long Knives. Exactly the terminology they were using describing the issue with Biden just last week. Everybody has heard about, you know, reinstituting the draft, reinstituting the draft, and the New York City draft riots, July 13, 1863. So I will leave that there. Once again, thank you, everyone, for your patience over the Patreon channel. Very, very much appreciate it. We will be getting a new video up. Clearly, we have to take a, a bit of a different uh, take on this now. Um, I'm going to give everyone here a hint. I can foresee, clearly, Trump is going to be president in November. Barring hand of God. I can foresee in four years, nobody even attempting to run against him. I can foresee the entire collapse of the political system to the extent now, because of this event, that in four years, there will be nobody even accepting any nominations to even attempt to run against President Donald Trump. And that will present us with a problem because of term limits, which I believe are probably going to have to be gotten rid of. Because there will be nobody nobody to run against him. Not even his own vice president, whomever that might be. So, anyway, I will leave that there. So, once again, polite, respectful comments, please. Um... It's real easy to point fingers right now and lay blame and to also assume motive, which I probably should have covered this a little bit earlier in the video, but I'll leave with this. Everybody, t Every time you hear somebody say, we need to uh, turn down the temperature, we need to tone down the rhetoric, they're blaming you. They're blaming free speech. That's code. That is code. We need to turn down the temperature. We need to uh, tone down the rhetoric. Or we, need to, we need more civil... That is code for we need to get rid of more free speech. They're blaming you. They're blaming you for it. It's, it's your posts. It's, it's your um, assessments that aren't quite so nice. It's mean tweets. They're blaming mean tweets. Whether the tweets come from the left or the tweets come from the right. They're blaming free speech and the people. It's the media absolving themselves. So, but don't worry. They're going to get around to blaming guns next. They're going to get around to blaming inanimate objects and um, 
random things that do nothing on their own. They're going to blame them. So I will leave it there. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.